On the side, he is part of a vocal group that has performed in five countries so far. Enjoys a collection of board games and is an automatic trader. He is beginning work on a series of books, aspires to open an alternative schooling system, a nursing hospital concept, and is working at becoming accredited as a trauma transportation coach. Tonight, he's here on stage to share a groundbreaking research on a silent killer, which has spread far and wide in society, and how it may be affecting your loved ones. What is the silent killer, and what does it done? More importantly, how do you know if you or your loved ones are affected, and what can you do about it? My name is Gerald, and I would like to educate you about a very hidden disease that is hiding within society right now, and how it affects us as well as our children. Right? But before I begin, I'd like to thank you for coming to this event. Now, I know there are, there are other things that you could be doing with your time. Right? You could be out playing with your children, you, know, you could be out making money. You know? so, um, first and foremost, thank you for coming here, and I don't want to waste your time. I promise you, I will do my best to make sure that this trip was worth it to you. Alright? So, first and foremost... Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the stage, Jaron Lee! who has depression or has attempted suicide? Raise your hand. Okay, wow. Okay, thank you. How many of you would believe me if I told you that a major part of the problem actually began from their childhood? Raise your hand. Oh, okay, good. My name is Gerald, and I am a trauma transmutation coach. And my mission in life is to eradicate abuse and neglect, aka trauma, from society so that we and our children can live in a better world. But before I begin, let me just repeat what just happened right there. I know some of you have other things that you may be that you may want to do, right? Some of you may be wanting to spend time with your children. Some of you may um, watch a movie, or read a book, or you know, just enjoy time spent with friends and loved ones. So, first and foremost, I want to thank each and every single one of you for coming to this event. And I promise that I will do my best to make this worth your time. So, today I want to share three things about this the first is about how childhood trauma is actually a very malicious, silent killer. The second thing is I want you to see for yourselves just how prevalent, just how widespread this neglect, this abuse and neglect, this trauma is, right, even within this room. And the third thing that I want to do is I want to introduce you to some ideas, some actions that you can take in order to reverse some of that damage. Ladies and gentlemen, handphones off for the moment. Thank you. But before I begin, so let me just let me just explain why I'm on stage, right? So at first, right, from the very beginning, in primary school, I was actually top of my school. 
Right, in primary three, I was selected for the gifted education program. And in between then and a, bit, and a few years later, I won the silver in the Singapore Math Olympiad. I got several distinctions in the Australian math competition. So I, I, I'm, I'm probably all right with math. I was also a vice, I was also vice president to two clubs when I was in junior college. And after that, when I went into the army, I was enrolled into officer cadet school. Currently, I am working as a resident care associate, taking care of the elderly in Renzi nursing home. Outside, as you may have heard, I am a vocalist, and I performed in many places in Singapore, locally. I performed in Esplanade, I performed at Sentosa, I performed at Gardens by the Bay. In addition, I'm also, I've also performed in four other countries. Right? Other countries, the fifth country is Singapore. Right? And, you, and when you hear that, you may, you may think to yourself, no, this sounds like a very smooth writing journey. You know, it's like from primary school all the way up to where I am right now. This must have been quite a smooth journey. But that's not the case. You see, what happened was that 10 years ago, I suffered from depression. Suddenly fell into it, and I had suicidal thoughts on my mind. And I didn't know what actually caused it. Right? I was frustrated with something, but I didn't know what that thing was. I wanted to get out of the depression, but nothing I did was working. So what do you do? Well, I did what I what I did what I could do, right? It's just like Dory the fish, you know, just just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So that's what I did. I just moved through life, still with the depression and the suicide on my mind. And then one day, I chanced upon something called the ACE study, which is the Adverse Childhood Experience study. And in it, I figured out, I learned from that study that there is a very powerful connection between what happens in childhood and what happens later in life. For example, stroke, heart attack, depression, and suicide. These are the things that come about through our childhood trauma. And the more I learned about it, the more I began to piece together that, hey, the things that happened in my life are affecting me right now, many years into the future. For example, when I was in primary two, right, I went to a friend's house to play computer games. And I didn't tell my mom. You know, I, I should have told my mom, you know, it's like, uh, that's the first thing you should do as a child, you know, you tell your mom, but I, I forgot, right? It was, it was just too something like, yeah, let's computer games, let's go. So there was that. And it turned out that she had been frantically calling, you know, like, hello, hello, is Gerald in this place? No, okay, thanks, that's fine. Hello, Jerry, is Gerald in this place? That's fine. And so on and so forth. She just kept calling and calling, and eventually she reached the house that I was at. And when she found out, she was like, call to the phone. Hi, mom. Come back home now. Okay. So I went back home. And then, <clears throat> I literally cannot remember what happened after that point. Even up to today. You know, from the bits and pieces that I managed to put together, Probably what happened was that I was given the most severe beating of my life up to that point. And apparently it was so ferocious that I developed amnesia. And even to this day, my memory is still kind of impacted. Right? But it was many years later that I began to realize that, hey, there are other things that actually happened after I, after I went through that. Remember when I told you that I was top of my school in P1? Yeah. After that beating, what happened? I slipped all the way down, not all the way there, but I slipped to average. Right? I was middling, and I never recovered from that. That friend I was with, I drifted away from him. Right? And then I never became close to other people. Of course, needless to say, I never actually went and initiated going to their places also. Right? What else, what else did I also do? Right. 
There was this, there was also this portion of time when I went very deeply into scriptural prophecy. And I became convinced that I had to prove my faith and therefore I should imagine myself how I could possibly die for my faith. So I imagined it. You name it, I probably thought of it. I've been burned, I've been shot, I've been killed, I've electrocuted, drowned, what, name it, I thought of it and I simulated that. And because of that morbid fascination with death, guess what? I wasn't interested in the future. And because I wasn't interested in the future, I wasn't interested to hold on a job. I jumped from job to job, industry to industry. I just moved through life, just like that. And, uh, whatever, you know, surviving for just the sake of surviving. And so, when I learned about this study and I looked back at my life, I thought to myself, this is incredibly powerful stuff. And I went deeper into it. I went into the medical research and I found out that this is a case of trauma. And in medical, in in the medical uh, community, there are ways to deal and treat trauma. And when I looked into the recommended actions for these tra traumas, I used those actions to try to turn my life around. And I succeeded. I felt better. I felt like I had a future to look forward to. I patched things up with my parents. But most importantly, I discovered that I have a mission. And my mission is to make sure that nobody else in the world would have to suffer through what I went through. So that is why I am here today. Right? Some of you have unmet potential and you're just ramming against this invisible barrier again and again. It's like, why? 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 You know, some of you have friends and loved ones and you look at them and you think to yourself, their childhood was a rough one, and they're being affected by it, right? And some of you, you know, you're just thinking, what can I do to help my children not have a failure to launch syndrome, right? And the way we do that is by first beginning to introduce the ACE score, finding out what is your ACE score, okay? And at this point, this is the point where I'm supposed to stop my presentation, but I was told that it would be incredibly mean for me to give you a, give you a problem, but not at least offer you a solution. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's what I do, right? I offer, I help you to make permanent changes to your habits so that you can reverse the trauma and eventually transmute and turn the traumas that control you into personal superpowers that you control. I'm Gerald, Trauma Transformation Coach. Thank you. Standing ovation to Gerald!